When God tells you, when he puts people in front of you, if he puts five people in front of you or he puts 10 people like our foundation class or he puts a group like you, a church like you, do not get, um, do not get rambunctious. Do, do not get uh, anxious to just get to something that pleases the flesh. Tell the Lord, help me, take your flesh in control. Praise the Lord, O my soul, as David ordered his soul and all that is within me. Give everything that you have to holding on to these scriptures because the power of God is one thing, but the power doesn't come without the scriptures coming with your understanding. If it does, it's it's like, um, how do I say this? If I was to... uh, if I was to put cologne on right now and walk down the aisle while I'm putting cologne on, you might smell it, but the cologne is on me. The overflow is on you. You see what I'm saying? So you don't want, you don't want the overflow. You want the, you want the flow. Amen? You getting a hold of that? So you have to grab hold of the word of God. And when you grab hold of the word of God, you have the, you have the choice whether you want to obey what the word says or just push it aside. And he'll keep, God is never going to leave you. He's always going to keep trying, like, like Jenna was saying last night with, um, uh, with Thomas. Nobody ever called him Doubting Thomas. Nobody ever said, called him Doubting Thomas in the Bible. The church gave him that name. But Jesus gave him the, not only are you not Doubting Thomas, I, it, you are, I'm going to help you know who I am, Jesus. Don't worry about Doubting Thomas. Know who, I'm going to help you know more about me, Jesus. Don't worry about what you doubt. Worry about how much he loves you and wants to get you to know. Amen. So we'll start with the scriptures tonight. The, the power, oh, church, and, and I'm going to, you know, you, you got it in you so much because you've been reading it, you've been studying it, you've been praying over this message, and it's in you so much, and you just pray, Holy Spirit, teach the people better than I even can say it. But the power of God is so important in your life. It's not something that, that you can use to benefit you, to grow your ministry. Remember, the church is not pleasing to God when we run it like a business. Amen? The church is, is, is a place where we gather each other, where we strengthen each other, where we grow each other. And, and it's not a place where we just we sit there and go, okay, how can we be the best? What can we do? How much money can we make? How much what can we do? How much fancy? No, the church is like, look, just be, in, be in, the, in the church. Just be the church. If the worship works, if not, last night um, there was a song that nobody knew and, and Jenna said, okay, everybody started singing. The keys weren't playing. Nobody was playing. Drums weren't playing. So the church just started singing. That's, it's not about the coordination of let's make it a production. This is not Hollywood. This is not theater. This is not Broadway. This is kingdom mentality. Amen? So the power of the Holy Spirit is for every one of you, but it's not a gift that every one of you are going to get unless you choose. Let me just start by saying how important the Holy Spirit is. Verse uh, 4 of Acts chapter 1. Ready? Follow me on this one. On one occasion, this is how important it was, Jesus told us. On one occasion, he was eating with them, and he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised. It's, it's a gift, first of all. You can't earn it. It's a gift. Which you have heard me speak out. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, this power is a gift but not just for everyone. Of course, Jesus right here is talking about Pentecost, but the gift is for those who, who, who seek him, those who follow him. It's, it's not, he didn't, it's not a gift that's going to be given. It's not a pearl given to a swine. Amen. You have to know what the gift is, but yet it's yours. So I'm going to jump to Acts chapter two, verse 38, and I'm going to show you who this gift is for and how, and how you get it. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. Wow. Now, hold on a second. I'm going to jump down here before I explain it. He said, and then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. So let me, let me jump back to this first part here. Repent and be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ. So to repent, this is what it means. To repent and be baptized is to choose a life of holiness. It's a choice. It's, repentance is a choice. Choosing a life of holiness is a choice. And I find that most people will come to God with an open heart 
for the moment. They did not repent to be baptized. They repented for something they did. So I don't really care about anything else I did. I'm really just concerned about, you know, my wife forgiving me, not leaving me, and taking half of my money. So, Lord, can you just forgive me for cheating on my wife? This is how people think sometimes. It's not a broad repentance. It's just an individual selfish repentance. We all do it. We've all done it before. But he's saying repent of all things and be baptized. But it doesn't just, to be baptized doesn't just mean to just dunk in the water. To repent and be baptized is to choose a life of holiness. Not a day of holiness, not a moment of holiness, not a, because I'm at church with my friends right now and everything's working out, holiness, but to choose an entire life of holiness. That means from this moment on, I choose Jesus, not the ways of the world. Now, in order to do that, you have to give up stuff that you don't want to give up. You have to stop doing things you don't want to do. Stop saying things you don't want to say. Stop talking the way you talk. It's like, I'm not ready to do that. Then you're not ready to be baptized. That's how you get the gift. You see what I'm saying? Well, I don't really care if I get the gift or not. I'm just happy if I'm, you know, I'm just breathing today. That's, that's like, oh, it's another day. So, that which is against the pleasures of the flesh is what you're giving up. This was probably the second baptism for many who had been baptized by John. The people that Peter is talking to, this is their second baptism. They, they've already been baptized by John. Now they're getting baptized into Christ. They, they were bat, Come on, come to the water, John said, and just repent and prepare yourself for the coming of the, of the Messiah. That's, that, was, that was John's repentance, you see. And, but today, we don't have what they had. Church, they were a community. They held each other accountable. That's why the Christians were called the way. This is the way, the truth, and the life. The way, they were literally called in the book of Acts, the way, capital W-A-Y, which is mean the way of Jesus. <clears throat> but they didn't have to the backslide. They had a community gathering them together, making sure that once they decided to follow Jesus, the community came together and made sure every single person stayed following Jesus. So it's not like today. You know what I'm saying? Somebody, had, uh, somebody we were using had had an issue with, um, with a circumstance. We were using them at our church. They were at another church. And the church had called up and said, we had to ask this person to step down and because they had done, 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 done this. Well, we're a community. So we said, you step down. We're not going to let you come to our church and do the same thing. And just because you're, we're not going to be the, the hero. It's like, oh, you know, they're a little tough on you. You come over. No, no, no. We have to stand behind the scriptures. And if that church says no, then we have to say no too. Are you with me? So that's what a community does. So this community he's talking about literally is to repent and repent of all the things that are pleasing to the flesh. Now, I'm going I'm to put this up on the screen. I want you to read this. I believe, this is me, I believe many have been baptized for their sins, maybe just out of guilt, but have not truly been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ to follow his ways or obey his commands. So people are being baptized in water in Christ for their sins, but they're not wanting to commit fully unto Jesus. That's not baptism, church. That's not baptism. So I'm going to get baptized tonight because everybody's getting baptized. I just want to start my life. Here I go. Boom. I'm baptized. No. Your mindset before you get in the water is I must stop the ways of the flesh and yearn and follow holiness. That means it's an abrupt stopping. Amen abrupt stopping and it's like it's tough it's tough but it can be done so it's like everybody's doing it doesn't mean it's right i gotta say that again just because everybody's doing it doesn't mean it's right doesn't mean it's okay you have to understand what you're doing before you actually do it so i'm gonna in the book of acts chapter 8 listen to this there was a, a, a eunuch in verse 34 the eunuch asked philip tell me please who is, the prophet talking, uh, who is the prophet talking about? He was reading in the book of Isaiah. Himself or someone else? Then Philip began that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. He was telling him he was reading about Jesus. 
As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. Watch now, watch very carefully. What can stand in the way of me, of, excuse me, of my being baptized? Question mark. The eunuch said to him, what can stand in the way? I, I didn't tell you guys this, so I understand you don't have that text. Now, that's verse 36. If you have the NIV or uh, most Bibles, you're not going to see verse 37 because it's not in there. Because the King James and the NASB put, the, put that in there. Because it was not in the original Greek. It was not, the Greek put it in later, but it wasn't in the original manuscript. And so, but the understanding of this, watch what it was. When he said the question, what can stand in the way of my being baptized? The answer to that was, and I have to read it in the King James, thuseth and thisest. And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus is the son of God. The reason this wasn't put in is because this was regarded to be certain. This was in the conversation. Everybody that talked about baptism didn't just say you're going to be baptized in the forgiveness of sin. There's going to be a new way of life. What they were saying is you are going to get baptized. And when you get baptized, you have got to solely turn your life around and follow Jesus. Now, you're not going to be 100% successful. That's why the Holy Spirit is there to help you. That's the gift. Are you with me? So if you're trying to succeed in life without the Holy Spirit... You're not going to succeed at all because you need that gift to help you get through the flesh moments. Amen? Now, now, hold on a second. So, and then he goes on to say, and you will receive the gift, I'll repeat that again, of the Holy Spirit. The promises for you and your children as, as, as far as time goes on. So how important is this gift? I can't think of anything that is actually more important than the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus actually instructed them to stay put and don't even attempt to do anything without it and then it continued to flow through everybody even the even the gentiles that's you and me so you can't even begin to understand or truly believe without the gift of the holy spirit here i'm going to say that again that's that's a slide on the screen they're going to put it up in a second you can't even begin to understand or to truly believe in the christ without the gift of the holy spirit now this is this is new to some people here because now it's the rubbers meeting the road. This is, this is tough. This is, this is text right here. This is like, this is what it means. And it's hard because it, it causes people to have to do more. Well, I would, Jesus died and I don't really have to do anything except believe. Are you kidding me? What, what he died on the cross so you can skate and have enjoy sin all your life and then skate into heaven? Doesn't anybody fear Matthew 7, 23? Away from me, I never knew you. Th doesn't anybody in the church fear this? I, I do. I can't speak for anybody else, but I am afraid that if I don't preach this, then I'm gonna be held accountable for the people that God has sent here that I was like, oh no, somewhere back in the years, fire and brimstone's too hard. Let's not even talk about hell anymore. They don't even talk about hell in church. Let me tell you something. It's real and it's hot. It's, you must talk about it. There's only, there's only two places of real estate you're going to spend eternity, heaven or hell. Why are we not talking about hell? Because hell has to make you change. And therefore, listen, I, I wrote something in my, let me see if I can remember because I didn't bring my phone with me. Um, the Bible says we are to love the sinner, not the sin. Okay? Well, no, no, sorry. The Bible doesn't say that, but that's how you can put it together. You love the sinner, not the sin. But if you love the sinner so much that they are comfortable in living in their sin, then you're loving the sinner without preaching the gospel to them. That's what the world does. We don't hate the sinners, but we're going to tell them the truth. Amen? They're going to, I'm sorry, they're going to know the truth. Amen? You can't sit there and say, listen, do you, is you, do you find anything wrong with my life? I don't find anything wrong with your life, but the Bible does so, and I follow that. I'm going to love you the way you are. It's your life. You're going to do whatever you want. You're going to spend eternity wherever you go. But I'm here to tell you that the Word of God says, well, I don't believe in the Word of God. I don't believe in the Bible, and I don't believe in Jesus. You will when you get there. Amen? Okay, so, so now, it's a choice. Repentance is a choice. 
Picking up your cross, following Jesus is a choice. The, the cross, when you hear them pick up the cross, it's the word of God. You're picking up Jesus. Jesus is the word. You're picking up and you're obeying the word of God. That, okay, hear, hear that again. Deny yourself, pick up your cross, follow, follow Jesus, follow me. Deny yourself of the flesh. Pick up the word of God, which is Jesus, and obey it. That's what it takes to be saved. That's what it takes to please the Lord. Anything else, anything else, you're lying to yourself. Well, I don't really want to talk about this. Oh, I think my phone's going off. I got to go. Um, yeah, I got to go. I think I left the light on in the third bedroom. I got to go. I don't want to hear what the pastor's saying. But if I start saying something funny or silly, you're going, oh, that's good. That's cute. But this is truth, and this is what's going to bless you. This is what's going to get the gift in your hands. Now, Jesus, all throughout the three years he walked with his apostles, he prepared his disciples to succeed with power, regardless of the circumstances that would come against them in this life. Can I say that a different way for you? What I'm talking about tonight, the power of God, the scriptures, the holy scriptures, do, you, do any of you get concerned about what's going on in the world and it brings you to kind of like almost anxiety? Yeah. Then you're not, you see, you probably won't want to say yes, <laughs> watch. You, you're not following the word because the word says, I have you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. No matter what you do, I'll be with you always to the very end of the age. If you have repented, if you have denied the flesh, if you are following my way, if you are committing yourself unto me, then you have nothing to worry about because the Holy Spirit goes before you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Okay. If not, well, I'm doing my part here. So remember, the God, I'm going to read out of the Gospel of John tonight, First and Second John, and uh, hold on a second. John wrote the gospel 60 plus years after Jesus rose from the dead. So John really got to see the benefit of following Jesus' ways. John never, never not followed Jesus. He never, he never fell apart. He, he followed him all the way. Are you with me? So what I'm writing to you was not written two days after Jesus rose from the dead or two years after him. 60 years of John ministering the gospel, he decided to sit down and say, this is what Jesus said. I'm going to write it because everything I'm going to write, not only did Jesus say it, but I did it and it worked. Are you with me? So John 14 verse 30 starts like this. I will not say much more to you for the prince of this world is coming. See, he's preparing his disciples. He has not, he has no hold over me. Satan is coming. He has no hold over me. Okay, hold on a minute. Satan is coming. He has no hold over me. If Satan is coming and he has no hold over Jesus... Watch now, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded. If Satan has no hold over Jesus, then Satan has no hold over you who have Jesus in you, if he's really in you. Amen. So what he's trying to say here is I have, he has come that the world may learn that I love the Father. How do you love the Father? How do you love the Father? If, here, I'm going to jump back here to John, to John 14, 15. How do you love the Father? If you love me, keep my commands, Jesus said. If I love, Jesus and the Father are one. They're not two separate people. One is eternal being and one is the Son of God coming as man to show you how to function on this earth and receive the power from heaven. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. How do you get the power of no lack, no limits, no boundaries to this planet right here? Jesus comes, obey him, follow him, and the same power that is coming through him is coming through you if you're actually repenting and following him. You can't just go to a tank and be baptized because you wanted to be forgiven for a sin. It's following him. It's a way of life. That's why many people get baptized. They're like, wait a minute, I've never been baptized. I've been baptized in a, I don't even know why I got baptized the last time. I didn't understand that. Now, let me tell you something else. I'll jump ahead, but if you, if you, baptize, if you were baptized with that understanding, that's how I was baptized. I baptized myself with that understanding. I don't ever need another baptism. However, I do need a tune-up. 
I'll get to that in a minute. So, but that happens at the altar. Now, wait a minute. Hold on a second. So where was I? Okay. So when Jesus said, the prince of this world, Satan, has no power over me, but I, 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 I let him come because the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me to. So meaning Jesus goes against everything Satan is and he and, and dies for us to overcome all the evil to show us how, how we can overcome it with holiness. Jesus overcomes the evil. Watch now, watch. Come on, don't miss this. He overcomes evil. He overcomes death. He overcomes the grave. He overcomes the anything that the world can throw at him. He overcomes it with the holiness by doing exactly what the Father commands. I only do what the Father does, and I only say what I, see the, what I hear the Father say. I'm not doing it. Why does Jesus only do what he sees the Father do? Why does he only say what he hears the Father say? Because he's hearing what the Father says, because he and the Father are one. What he is saying, he wrote. It's already been written since the beginning of time. When you read the Old Testament and you say, the angel of the Lord came, the angel of the Lord is Jesus. He was before he came. Are you hearing this? That's why when he said, I was before Abraham, bam, kill him. He's blasphemy right now. See, they didn't get it because they were too much into the intellect rather than the heart elect. So now, watch this. That's why you got to surrender yourself. This is perfect obedience. Jesus is explaining perfect obedience. So now John 14, 15, I'll go back to what I said there before. If you love me, keep my commands. The disciples... The disciples' love for Christ is revealed in their obeying his commands. Look how many times he's going to emphasize this in the epistles of John. The gospel of John, then there's the epistles of John. John 1, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. Now watch this. Don't, don't, do not fall asleep. Do not let your mind go TikTok right now. Do not let your mind say, okay, okay, this is a little too heavy for a Friday night. This, is, this right here could save generations of your family. Amen. Are you with me? Okay. So watch now. John wrote the epistles 67 years after the resurrection of Christ, which is after he wrote the, in other words, he wrote them after the book of John. This is what he says in 1 John 2. I'm only going to, I'm only going to stay in 1 John. I can go through 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John, but we're going to just stay in 1 John tonight. That's it. 1 John 2, it says, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his command. The only way to know Jesus is to keep his commands. So because, excuse me, it's because we have chosen to follow and repent and to be baptized, believing and following Jesus is to the fullest, is loving one another in the same way that he loves us. It's literally living a lifestyle. First John chapter three, verse 22 says, and receive from him anything we ask. We will receive anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. Now, what are we receiving? In the terms of their spiritual needs, and provisions required for God's work, a believer will receive all that he needs. It's not, you're not gonna receive a new car, you're not gonna receive a new house for obeying him. No, you're gonna do that because you're gonna get a job and go to work. But you're gonna receive all the power that is in heaven by obeying and keeping the commands of Christ. Because he said, I only say what the Father says and I only do what I see the Father do because I am the kingdom that comes on earth as it is in heaven to share with you. Not only do I communicate with you, as I said last night, but I want to get in you. I want to show you what to do. And then that power that is in heaven will come through me, through you. You're unstoppable. No demon in hell can stop you. Nothing on this planet should fear you. Don't worry about what's going on on this planet. Worry about what has gone on in heaven. Amen? I know that's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to swallow because the news is in your face. It's up to you. Do what you got to do. Now, verse 24 of 1 John 3 says, The one who keeps God's commands lives in him, and he in them. Who? What? And this is how we know that he, loved, he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. So you will see the results of the Holy Spirit <laughs> because it's the power of heaven coming through you trust me church trust me when when i was teaching at the school this was just these were just our kids this was just they go to school five days a week and learn about jesus but when i would travel around the country with i don't know even parts of the world like i told you before when i traveled in in, in brazil to a park that nobody knew anything about jesus 
Never heard about them. They just came for a free meal. And there's tons of kids, tons of adults, families that lived in parks, squatters. And you sit there and you go, I have repented. I have I've chosen to follow Jesus. When I stumble, he picks me up. But I don't stumble and go, well, I tried, and then leave. A lot of people do that. I'm going to follow Jesus. Well, I stumbled. I stumbled. I'm done. I'm done. I mean, we tried, Lord. We gave it the best shot we could. Thanks. See ya. I'm out of here. No. You stumble. Let him pick you back up again. Amen? So when I would preach to these people, I didn't know how. You can't. There's no formula to make the power of God show up. But if you're preaching the word, it, the, the power follows the word. Hold on a second. The word doesn't follow the power. The power follows the word. Amen? I don't think you get that. If you come to a service, like last night, you said, I said, listen, we got to stop what's happening here. The word's got to be preached. No, the power follows the word because the only way you'll recognize who the power is is if you know the word. If you see the power before you understand the word, it's a cologne residual off of someone else. You're smelling, I must smell good. No, it's not you that smells good. It's the one that's got the spray on them that smells good. You see? But when you hear the word, then it's on you. It's in you. It's through you. And that's why Jesus said, the one who keeps my commands, who keeps God's commands, lives in him. Jesus lives in him. And I mean, holy, sorry, the father lives in the son. The son lives in us. You're unstoppable. Okay. I don't know. See, this is revelation to me. This is just like the whole concept of, of renew. The whole concept of holiness is understanding how to get there. It's about the obedience of God. It's, it's not about, oh man, I don't even know how to start. I don't, I'm not gonna start. I'm just gonna let the Holy Spirit tell you. Okay, amen, let's do that. First John 5, we're, going, we're still in First John. Loving God means keeping his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. So God's commandments are not oppressive for believers. Those who love God obey his commandments to honor God with the Holy Spirit prompting them to do so. So this is a choice you choose. Burdensome means it's not burdensome. You want to do it. His disciples are expected to follow him. So now if you'll allow me, if you'll allow me to just take a couple more seconds here and give you um, just a handful of script, just a couple more scriptures, that's it. And we, you let me go to, to uh, John 13, 15. The word of God says, Jesus said, I have set you an example. Jesus is saying this. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you that no servant is greater than his master, nor is a manager greater than the one who sent him. A messenger, excuse me. So therefore, Jesus is saying right here, you're not greater than me. You're not greater than the Father. So whatever I do, you do. Whatever I receive, you'll receive. It takes baptism to a whole new world. It's not just about water anymore. It's not just about that. Baptism is truly a lifestyle change. It's your commitment to him and coming out of the water is his commitment to you. 